In honor of Black History Month, Ryan Hinkson gave us a tour of a few culturally important landmarks in the city of Toronto. Check it out. Hey, y'all. The thing about black history is it's all around us, all around us in ways that we don't always think about. Here in Toronto, the city is filled with historic and commemorative sites highlighting the stories of people whose contributions to society go way beyond the month of February. Come with me and I'll show you. Once lost to history, in 1985, archaeologists unearthed the foundation of a small home belonging to Thornton and Lucy Blackburn, Underground Railroad Freedom Seekers. Their recapture in 1833 sparked the Blackburn riots in Detroit. Escaping again, they relocated to Toronto and established the city's first taxi cab company. Today we're here with Rosemary, who's going to give us some insight into their story. Rosemary, could you tell us a little bit more about the Blackburns? Absolutely. These are amazing people who made themselves free on the Underground Railroad. When they escaped north, they ended up ultimately in Detroit. But somebody recognized them as having run away from Kentucky, and they were imprisoned. So it was terrible. Uh, but the community rallied around them, and they effected an escape. Ultimately, they end up in Toronto. And they actually started Toronto's first taxi cab company. They did. It was painted bright yellow and red, and uh, that's really important because those colors continue yeah. with the TTC that we have today in right. Toronto. So, Rosemary, you're here educating us about black history, which we're so grateful for. But an incredible part of this story is that you're such a big part of black history in Canada. In the 90s, you helped to petition the province to honor black history. Could you tell us a little bit more about why you felt it was so important to do so? Uh, representation matters, that's the bottom line. And when I found myself the president of the Ontario Black History Society, I didn't know that we had to petition the city of Toronto every year to ask them to please give us Black History Month. Right. So when I discovered that, I wanted to secure it with the city, secure it with the province, and secure it with the country. And by December 1995, my initiative to have February as Black History Month was successful for the, the whole of Canada. Thank you for so much for everything that you've done, and we want to just express a small token of our appreciation to you as well. Oh. oh. There you go. <laughs> Roses for Rosemary. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. These are beautiful. This is the Oscar Peterson School of Music in the Royal Conservatory of Music. Considered a virtuoso, Oscar Peterson was one of the greatest jazz pianists of all time. Releasing more than 200 records and winning eight Grammys, he helped shape a generation of musicians, both as a teacher and an icon. Um, I know this is a question that I could probably Google and get an answer, but in a broader sense, who was Oscar Peterson? Oscar Peterson was probably one of the best jazz piano players, if not the best jazz piano player of his generation. He played with luminaries like Dizzy Gillespie and Ella Fitzgerald and uh, Count Basie, uh, even, even Ray Charles. He played with Ray Charles and Canadian, homegrown, born in Montreal. One of the biggest pieces, an iconic piece by uh, uh, Oscar Peterson is called Him Freedom. And Hymn to Freedom uh, is in the Canadian uh, Songbook Hall of Fame. It has been rewritten for orchestra, for concert band, for symphony orchestra. And we're talking a composition that was actually a call to arms uh, song for the civil rights movement back in the 50s and 60s, Martin Luther King used, but also a song that just resonated through generations, through different styles and genres. So we're talking a very, very impressive man. Colin, this was great. Thank you so much for your time. My absolute pleasure. Appreciate the information. Good meeting you. I've got one more stop to make, but this was fantastic. Appreciate it. I appreciate you dropping by. Thank you very much. Welcome to Reggae Lane in Little Jamaica, the birthplace of the world famous Carabana. In 2015, this alleyway was renamed to commemorate all the legendary reggae artists who recorded here in the 60s and beyond. But the culture goes way beyond a mural. Raps, owned by Carol and Horace Rose, was the first Jamaican restaurant to open in the area in the 80s, and it sparked the business boom that eventually turned this place into Little Jamaica. All right, so can you tell me about the area before it was Little Jamaica? Raps was founded in 1982, and how 
raps came about was my husband yeah. is a manager for musician. While he was in Toronto, okay. there was no place for the musician to go to eat. Ah, okay. Right? So there was none of this, none of restaurants around but rap. So the musicians, whenever they finish playing a gig or whatever, they would, this is where they would meet up. It was a place to be yeah. in the 80s, 90s, up to the 2000s. Right. And, and it's still a place to be. You know, having a mural like this, something that can commemorates legacy and a certain era and a time and part of what you're responsible for. What does that mean to you? Oh boy. Oh boy. It is legendary yeah, yeah. that has passed through. Yeah, yeah. That has been here, that has been on this pavement, if not this one on the sidewalk, you know. They have put in their dues, you know. Mm -hmm. And we're grateful for this mural and we're grateful that it has kept, you know, to, to the standard that, that it is. There's so much black history here and in cities all across the nation. It stretches far beyond everything that we learn today. I don't know about you, but I'm so inspired to learn more. I'll see you soon. Please welcome Ryan Hinkson. Hey, Ryan. Hey, how are you doing? Oh, man, I'm so good. It's so good to see you. Good to see you, too. Thank you so, so much. That was such a cool kind of tour around Toronto. Right. And black culture is so rich in Canada in general, not just Toronto. That's right. So you're going to talk about a couple other communities yes. and places from across the country that are really significant. We've got to do yeah. it. Yeah. So when talking about black history in Canada, we have to start in Halifax in Africville, such an important place. Mm -hmm. This was home to Jamaican Maroons, who are these incredible freedom fighters from the Caribbean, refugees from the War of 1812, and formerly enslaved people from the U.S. Yeah. Now, the story is so important because it's one of... Resilience. Mm -hmm. um, back in the 60s, 1960s, there was a renewal project mm -hmm. that ended up causing the demolishing of the homes in Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, government had cited that it was for reasons like making sure that they were living in a better place, but all it really accomplished was um, ultimately like destroying a really strong and vibrant community and yeah. displacing its people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, today, it still stands. Mm -hmm. It was changed into a municipal park, but now it actually commemorates the history of the people okay. that are still there. Yeah. Right? So we can't forget about, you know, what they did mm -hmm. and how that leads to, you know, what we have today. Truly, it's one of those things where we can talk about this amazing community, but yes. you can't skirt over the fact that then it was it was bulldozed right. to yeah. make a park, and that's not... No. Okay, but but commemorating and, and looking at what we did right. is key. Of course, there was a, a church there that was so important to the community. It was bulldozed. Mm -hmm. It's later been resurrected, so oh. it's a, a historical museum now. Oh, that is so cool. And right. you recently, you went to Halifax, I right? I did. It yeah. was my very first time out east. I absolutely loved it. The yeah. people there have such a strong sense of our country's history yeah. and just this willingness to share yeah. their experience, which is completely amazing. We've got to talk really quickly about Viola Desmond, oh, of course. who we might recognize as the lady on our $10 bill. Yes. So tell us really quickly about Viola Desmond. Right, so mm -hmm. not just the reason why our bill is so beautiful, yeah. but she was a black businesswoman in mm -hmm. Halifax. In 1946, she makes history mm -hmm. um, because she's in a movie theater. She sits in a white-only section. Mm -hmm. They ask her to move. She's like, no, no. I'm not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, she's jailed for tax evasion because mm -hmm. the price on a ticket is a penny difference between the cost of a black ticket and a white ticket. Oh, wow. She suffers this indignity, but that story goes on, her courageousness goes on to inspire Canadians and people all over mm -hmm. to stand up for what is right, just like she did. Now, we want to move into kind of Quebec now. Sure. Talk about Little Burgundy. So oh, I understand, right. thanks to Prohibition, in yes. Little, Little Burgundy in Montreal area, right. jazz kind of got its thing. It really you know, got did, going. yeah. Mm -hmm. so Prohibition spreading throughout the United States. Mm -hmm. So nightclubs spring up in Little Burgundy. Mm -hmm. People are coming from everywhere to perform, including a local talent, jazz legend Oscar Peterson. Oh my yes. gosh. Right. I love Oscar Peterson. He exactly. is honestly, Hymn to Freedom, one of my favorite songs. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So his father was uh, one of the black Canadian railway porters. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah. And he buys his family a piano, mm -hmm. a young Oscar starts to play, and mm -hmm. the rest is, as we say, history. Yeah, that's yeah. fantastic. Mm -hmm. Now, moving over a little further west into yes. Edmonton, Alberta, right. you wanted to talk a little bit about the community of Amber Valley. Yeah, so mm -hmm. Amber Valley is this small farming community. We're talking maybe about 300 people, yeah. uh, former slaves that had settled there. It mm -hmm. goes on to become one of the largest black settlements in the West. Um, but think about having warm African Caribbean blood yeah. facing 
conditions, extreme weather, swampy yeah. conditions. It was a very, very tough place to just build mm -hmm. a community, but mm -hmm. they thrive, they survive. Someone of note that's from there is Violet King Henry. She's actually Canada's first female black lawyer. Her wow. family moved there in the 1900s during the Great Migration. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. So even in the face of all of that hardship yes. and, and turmoil, right. coming out strong yes, ahead of, of it. Yes, Yeah, that's beautiful. Now, all the way to the West Coast, yes. tell us a little bit about Hogan's Alley in Vancouver. Oh, okay, so Hogan's Alley, yeah. uh, in about 1858, mm -hmm. there are 400 black families that uh, used to reside in California. They're mm -hmm. invited to moved to British Columbia mm -hmm. by the governor of Vancouver Island because mm -hmm. uh, they're trying to establish new communities mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. So they move there, they build it, they start to thrive. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, much like Africville, uh, people start to be displaced over the decades because of municipal uh, land reclaiming, mm -hmm. right? So that's why we've got to continue to tell these stories, mm -hmm. highlight these folks. Mm -hmm. uh, a very, very cool story, though, attached to Hogan's Alley mm -hmm. is Jimi Hendrix's grandmother, Nora Hendrix, she was a very well-known community activist there. Oh, cool. Yeah, so we have a little Canadian connection to Jimmy one Hendrix. of the greatest rock and roll legends of all time. Yeah, that's yeah. amazing. Mm -hmm. Honestly, Ryan, this has been such a great tour, that, that tour of Toronto and this tour across Canada. Thank, Thank you. you so, so much. Of course. That is great. Hey, Mary here. What did you think? Drop your comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe for more of the good stuff.